today, what we're going to be doing is taking a drawing of a bird and adding our watercolor to that. You don't have to worry today about drawing the bird itself. That's a different workshop. And, oh, uh, girls, your worksheets are right here, okay? Um, so if you remember from our previous work workshop, we did these two birds. Uh, we've added watercolor to these two, and we did not add watercolor to the two on the bottom of the page. So today, what we're going to be doing is working with these two birds down here. And we will um, be looking at sort of a step-by-step -step structured approach for how to, um, how to add watercolor in a way that is controlled, doesn't end up with big puddles of uncontrollable sloshy stuff. It'll make your watercolor drawing a lot easier to do. So you're gonna want a watercolor kit. You're gonna want this download. If you go to the chat, you can find a place to, a link to be able to print this out. So um, if you haven't done that, I would run Scamper and get that right now and it will be good. Um, the reason that's really useful to practice watercolor drawing on top of the drawing that somebody else has done is because then you're not worried about like, oh no, I don't want to mess up. I like this drawing. I don't want to mess it up. So this, you have carte blanche just to, if, it, if, it, if you like it, that's great. If you don't, that's great. If you're going to learn something and it's going to really help to kind of paint along with it as we go. Because a big part of this is learning some techniques. The other piece of it is that because you are, um, because you actually have your paints out and you're just, you're working with your paints and these techniques, you're understanding the amount of water on your brush, the amount of pigment that you have in that water, how that works on the page, how wet it is, and how those things work together. The big secret of watercolor, the big trick that everybody's working towards, is being able to control the amount of water that you have in your brush on the page and understanding, uh, just sort of understanding that flow of water, where it's wet, <clears throat> where it's dry, how wet, how dry, is the big thing. The reason that a lot of us have trouble with our watercolor is because our approach is we take a big wet brush, we put it into the water, we go ding, 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 get a clean brush. Now there's this brush with a big drop of water on the end. You bring that over into your paint pan, you put it down. Now there's a big bubble of water sitting on top of your paints, right? So you kind of mix that in and it makes this kind of thick syrup. And then you dip your brush into that and then you hit it on your page. So what's going on here is that there is now, there is kind of an unknown, uncontrolled mass of water and pigment. And it can be rather wet and sloppy. And when you take that brush and you bring it from that kind of pool of wet paint, over to your page, your brush now has this big drip on it. So you start to paint with it and there's already, there's a lot of water on your page. So water control, water control is the secret sauce. And for one of the things I find really helps with this is using, this is, this is, the, this is the water brush and it has water inside the handle. So if you look at this, you can see the little drip that's, so this has water inside its handle and they're great for the field. I now use these for all of my painting. And um, the, uh, so with this brush, when you first start using it, it will often have sort of too much water down at the tip. The, the amount, the flow of water just by capillary action out the tip might be a little bit fast. Just work for, through it for about an hour, and after that, it'll just kind of slow down a little bit and it will be working for you. Um, what I usually do when I bust out my, my, my brush, I'm going to sort of show you kind of my water management technique, and then we're going to jump over to the actual birds. But first, we're just going to start with kind of how I'm managing the water, both on my brush and the um, and also um, on my, in my paints and on my paper. So let's go there now. Here we are. All right. So here is, here is, here's my page. And um, what I recommend that you don't do is I recommend against taking your brush, 
sticking it into the paint, getting paint on your brush, and then um, starting to paint on your piece of paper. All right. What's going to happen is there's going to be block, blobby paint in here, or it's going to be too thick, it's going to be too intense, too dark, and then you get that on your paper, and you're like, oh no, I thought it would be a different color, and everybody's sad. So here is, here's the approach. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my paint, and I take my brush, let's say I've got a, a, a a, a clean brush. I just got a little white brush here. I got, here we go. It's a clean brush. And I put the tip of it into to here. And if my brush tip is a little bit damp, then that is going to liquefy the paint right in there. There's now, I'm going to see if you can see, see how thick the tip of this brush is? There's a big dollop of water on the tip of my brush. If I were to take that dollop and bring it right over onto this painting, I would get this big uncontrolled wet splotch, I would be sad. So what happens is after this, I jump over into the mixing pan and I just sort of take it for a little bit of a spin there, right? Because the pan is white, I'm also better able to see what color it is and, um, and how watery it is. I can then test that out on my piece of paper out here. Like, ooh, that is pretty watery. So to control my water, I am going to just brush this brush onto a piece of paper. Now the brush tip is much more dry. I'm not squeezing my brush. And I can dip back into that or mix it with other things. Bring it out here to the side, test it, All right? And so I can actually see on my palette, I'm getting a sense of you know, what colors I'm mixing out here. I test that on the piece of paper. And then I look at how also how fine pointed the tip of my brush is now, right? Because I dried it, re-soaked up some paint and, you know, tested. I now have this sharp little point here and I could do much better precise painting with this than with that big drip that sits on, on the, the end of the brush. So here's a nice little fine point um, and I'm good to go. All right, so the first step in doing these is that I start with a purplish gray, um, a purple gray shadow color. And I've actually already painted that in on these birds. We did that in the previous class. But I'm going to kind of go over some of those, maybe make some of these shadows a little bit darker, just so you can see what it is. Let's say, imagine that this one was more in some intense sunlight. Intense sunlight gives you darker shadows and sharper contrast. So I'm going to kind of intensify some of these shadows here, so you'll be able to see them a little bit better. But also, you'll get to see me paint in some of the shadows. So I'm going to use that same approach. So I take my brush. I'm going to go into my shadow color. I've got sort of a purple gray mixture in here. And I'm going to bring that into the palette and take it for a spin around like that. So I'm mixing it around on the palette. Then I'm going to test that off on the side here and see what color it is. All right, so that's a pretty intense, very dark value thing. So I'm back over here and I'm adding a little bit more water to it. All right, I might even get my brush a little bit drier now pick up some of that paint, All right? Still pretty dark. So I'm gonna add, give it a slight squeeze, add a little bit more water in here, clean my brush, All right? Pick up some of that. Okay, there is a more subtle shadow color. And so if the sunlight is hitting the back of this white crown sparrow, I'm gonna put in a slightly more intense um, shadow color in here, in here, in this part of the wing down here on the belly. Notice that as I paint, the intensity of this paint gets less. So it, as I first start to stroke with it, it is, um, it's a much more pale color. Um, oh, Amelia, would you um, unplug the um, hair dryer that I have over there and plug it in underneath my table right there. Thank you, girls. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now, and you can plug it in right down there. All right, so this is, thank you. 
Um, so this is a, that little kind of shadow color. I put the shadow in first and then I let that dry. I'm gonna speed up my drawing process here. And it really helps if it's bone dry. Which it now is. All right? So if you put the shadow in at the end, it just it, it messes up all your details. So if I put a shadow over that, it would be taking all those details and smearing them and smudging them together. It'd be, it would be sad. All right. So we put the shadow in at the start, and then we put other paint on top of it, it shows through. All right. Now what I do is I Oh, actually, I, I did want to show you one other thing. Just sort of notice when I have paint on board on my brush, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. With a water brush, the way, maybe I won't zoom in. All right, um, let's try this. Oop. There we go. There we are. Um, so just notice when you start to paint with the water brush, it starts off darker because there's more paint on it. As the paint in the brush gets used up, I'll speed that up by taking a couple of little swipes there. It is now lighter. A couple of swipes there. It's now lighter. So what happens is as you brush, as you paint with it, it becomes increasingly ghosted out and pale. So the way that a water brush works is different than a traditional brush. As paint runs out, you get these tints of whatever color you have. So that's why I started with this one. I started up in this area, sort of the mid body where I wanted some deeper shadows. And then as my brush ran out of paint, I then started to kind of work out into some of these areas where I wanted a lighter value and a more subtle shadow. So I will often just... Right. So I, I will... I will I started in this area in here, kind of this core shadow area. And then as the brush ran out of paint, I started more in these areas like that. Right. So um, now what I'm going to do with this bird is I am going to start to add the local color. So the local color is, if it's you know, a green bird, I'm adding green paint. If it's a uh, yellow bird, I'm adding yellow paint. So I put that on top of this dry, this dry layer. Oh, actually, one other thing I should say, <laughs> one other, other thing, right, um, is notice that there's a little halo of light right here around the belly. So if the light's coming from the back, this little halo of light on the front edge here is reflected light. So if there's an object out here that light is bouncing off of, it's going to illuminate the belly a little bit. I will often not bring the shadow all the way out to the edge. If this were floating out in outer space, then you wouldn't have any object reflecting light back to it. But a lot, on a lot of objects that we find in the environment around us, you will find that there's reflected light, which kind of illuminates the belly side a little bit. So I intentionally leave a little bit there. So just a, one other little note about that, that shadow. All right. Um, what I'm going to do now is to show you um, kind of what our target is here. All right. So um, I'm going to show you some photographs from birdpixel.com of how the white crowned sparrow looks. Um, and so um, in this workshop, we're not going to be actually keeping these reference photos up while I'm doing the painting. It ends up that that in the recording um, uh, makes for some real difficulties. So I will at a few times be going back and forth between these two, but in this workshop, you're not going to be able to simultaneously see both. I know that's, it's kind of a cool thing that we can do on Zoom, but it ends up having some other complications to it. So here's, here's our target. All right, this is the white crown sparrow. And white crown sparrow, let's see. Um, I 
go to meeting controls. So there is a gray head, white, two white stripes on the top of the head, gray head and face, a little bit paler on the throat. There's a brownish gray back with darker reddish brown stripes on it. <clears throat> we see that the belly goes gray down to here and then the flanks have a brownish buff on them. It really helps as you're looking at something like this to start just to say out loud what you're seeing. So um, a darker brown in the wings, pale little edges on those. I am seeing on these one, two, three, these tertial feathers right here, I'm seeing that they have at the top sort of more reddish, then turning pale, darker at the back. All right. Um, and then a little bit of red brown in the wings in here, white wing bars. All right. um, if it's more fluffed out, the patterns on the back make, they don't, they make fuzzy patterns. If it is more kind of com compact and, and sleeked down, the feathers make more deliberate clear streaks. So those are the, uh, those are the details of, of the bird, now dark eye, yellow beak. Little bit of dark on the uh, uh, tip of the beak, especially on the top. So I'm saying these observations out loud that will help me remember them. Um, also, if you are drawing from reference material or the real bird is in front of you, you can always look back at the bird. But this is the, the template. Oh, one last thing, this is kind of cool. Look at this little white zone right around the eye there, all right? That's going to help pop that eye. So we're soaking this in. And now let's go back to. Um, so, Melinda, are you seeing the. Um, yes. Uh, this guy clearly on the screen? Yes, we are. All right. So I'm now going to add local color to it. So here's, here's the guy, it's like local color from light to dark. So local color from light to dark. So I'm thinking for the local color, there is this dusty gray, there's the brown in parts, there's a sort of reddish brown. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm gonna jump around and try to use just sort of one color at a time. Those big bold black stripes, the dark stripes on the back, of course, are things that go in towards the end. As we start light, we go to dark. So let's, let's try that now. Um, so one of the colors I have on my palette, let me just make a blank spot here. One of the colors that I have is called Black Tourmaline Genuine. And it makes for a very, <clears throat> very kind of uh, neutral gray And I'm going to primarily reach for that black tourmaline for some of the gray parts of the bird. So what I'm doing now is actually going to zoom back. A um, little bit. If you can see my, my palette, what I'm doing is I am just I'm making little test stabs, test dabs on my paper. And when I do that, I'm seeing just how much, how light, how dark it is. All right, <clears throat> this will work for me. So I'm now going to come in and paint gray over the face of this bird, up into the cheek and into the malar, but leaving the throat um, area more white and then that color blending down on the chest so there's just some white some so gray that came across <clears throat> Uh, 
I want the transition here in the throat to be a little bit more pale, so I'm just getting that part wet, lightening it so that there's not quite as much of a hard edge right at the throat. It's also a little bit of a mousy brown. And I've got some just brown gunk here in my palette, so I'm going to and originally just reach towards that, testing it on the side of my paper. And I'm going to put some of that on the, <clears throat> the back of the bird. And that can come up as sort of a background color between these stripes. And as I get more towards the back here, I'm going to kind of lighten that a little bit to just give a place for some light, some sunlight to still be hitting on the back there. I want a little bit of a brush of brown in the flanks. Test the color off on my side. I'm getting rid of some of the paint and then with very pale brown, putting in just a little bit more so that it, that, that one part blends into the other. And add a little bit of brown up behind the back of the head. I'm then going to switch to a medium value of, um, of brown. Actually, I could still maybe use a little bit of this really light one just to be some of the feather edges in here. Okay. And here. All right. Now I'm going to let that dry. Now for part two here, I am going to get a little bit more of a slightly red brown tint of paint. And again, I've got, if you look, I've got just, I often like to have a dirty palette where I can take values and colors that I've already made. So to help me with that, I've got kind of a brown gunk zone, a dark gunk zone, a green gunk zone, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow gunk zones. So you'll see me often dip into these, some of these kind of pre-mixed gunk zones. And those are, end up being really useful. So for instance, here, I can, again, test on the side and I'll put a little bit of that red brown into the scapular feathers coming right in there. I'm going to put a little bit of that red brown into the sides of these tertial feathers coming in there. I'm going to put a little bit of that red brown into um, I'm going to put some of that red brown into the covert feathers here. So it's getting kind of a warm little blush in there. But again, this is, it's not very, the, and the, this, look at this, this, this is already fairly dry. I don't have a lot of water here. Because I'm using the water brush without squeezing big drops of water, this stuff is dry. And so that means I don't have, I don't have to wait for it as much. And um, I also uh, don't have problems with stuff sloshing together. So that's, that's helping me. I'm now going to go for a slightly darker shade of brown for the tail and the wings. So these feathers here that are held together with more stiff little barbs, um, these feathers are going to be, these are my, my flight feathers. 
I'm going to use a slightly darker brown. So I'm taking some of the colors that I already have, mix those with some of the darker gunk in my palette. Or I could dip into these darker ones here if I needed to. I'm going to test that on the side. And I like it. And so I'll put some of that into the tail. And my brush strokes follow the directions of the edges of the feathers. Um, so if a mark shows up like here, there's that little edge there. That's just sort of along the edge of a feather. That is showing, um, sometimes the feathers will have a slightly paler edge. Watch this on the side here. On these, <clears throat> on these wings right here, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be stroking my brush up this way. And look at look at this. If I am if I take the side of my hand and hold it on the piece of paper, I can make a series of careful look at that. All right, that's done. That's done with a brush tip. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to come along the edge of, of these feathers here and I am going to make the inside core of this feather darker. I'll do the same thing up here. So this feather here is going to come down darker. And I leave the edge of it just a little bit more pale. This one here coming along the back edge of it and bringing that to the front. But I'm not painting in that entire feather. This way I get this margin of the feather that goes from red brown to white at the tip of it. Recharge my brush. Now look at this. This, is, this, this part is, is fun. I'm just going to make a series of lines going in this direction, parallel lines. And if I have the paper here and I'm trying to do it at some weird angle where my hand gets kind of kinked, my lines will be wobbly. But it's easy for me to make lines in this direction with my hand, right? So what I do is I turn my piece of paper to match the easy direction for my hand to make lines. So at this point, I can then come along here. And there's that first one. And then I'm going to come right next to that. Here's number two. Here's the next one, number three. And what I'm doing is I'm creating pale edges for these feathers. And now kind of coming up at an angle here. So let's stop here and take a look back at the bird itself. All right. Um, let's take a look at those photographs again. Actually, well, maybe I'll zoom in one more time, see if this thing is letting me zoom. Ah, now the zoom is working. All right. So what I've got is see those pale edges coming up and I've come down around the edges of these ones here, putting in these edges here, and I'm coming up at an angle, the bottom edges of those. So what's, what, here's, here's what I'm, I'm going for in, in doing that. Let's go back to the reference material. And here they are. Right, so look at that. Um, you have 
these feathers coming down, dark, then the front edge of them is light and dark with the red, brown, and the white. And then you get into, uh, so those feathers coming down, one, two, three. And then there's a whole pile of them that are the same length. And as you get towards the front edge, I'm coming up at an angle. See that little white bar in there? That is um, sort of a change in the shape of each of these primary feathers that come along right in here, where the feather has a little jog that goes in and then continues. Oh, not you yet. <clears throat> jog that comes in and continues, and there's white along that jog. So that little kind of place where I, I drew in these lines as dark, then leave a little bit of space there, and I can then pick that up on the, on the back side. All right. In a moment, I'm going to be going over here into these feathers. And you see those little dark parts in there? I'm going to be putting in those dark parts, those little dark lines right there, right there, right there, right there. I'll be putting in those dark lines. And I'm also going to be putting in a little bit more black, uh, maybe not the black yet. All right. But you see, you see where we're going with this, right? Can you see OK from over there? No? Do, you want, do you want to bring the chair over? All right, well, we're going to just uh, we're going to move some furniture around here for a second. Sorry, I wasn't aware that you couldn't really see. This will be better. We're just moving around our studio space here. Are you good? Okay. Um, you can't you can't find your 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 brushes and stuff. Can can you work with Amelia to to share? Hey, actually, I have. Okay, great. All right, now, so here we go. Let's jump back to, um, we're going to jump back to this cam, and I'm going to continue drawing on this, and so we're going to see where we, where we go. All right, I've got, here I've got this with red, brown. Um, let's, I'm going to draw in some some edges on some of these feathers coming down here. Um, before I put in, I might put the little bit darker towards the back edges of some of these feathers. Right, I can put in some dark in here. That will get even darker later. I'm going to put dark here on my primary coverts and my allula. And before I put darks into these covert feathers here, I'm first going to just come along with a little bit more background brown. Now I let that dry. So this is this is the this is the next step is going to be fun. I'm going to get some dark paint and I'm going to put it in on the edges of some of these greater secondary coverts. Right. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is use some of my palette gunk. And Watch this. I'm going to, on this, um, on my first feather here, there's going to be some dark that comes in the back like that. And then I see a little bit of that sticking out on the next feather. So on this next one here, there's going to be a little bit of black, of dark in there. And on the next one, same. Come 
in here, same. And you see the effect we get is a whole series of, so let, let's let Carolyn come in right in here. Carolyn, you may use my palette. All right. Yeah, why don't you, you can bring your, your paper right in here. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of dark into these next ones here. These ones here, There we go. And so I get this wing that sort of feels like you've got these overlapping feathers. Matt, could you slide your image just a tad over, please? This way? Uh, a little bit more. There you go. Okay, good, good. All right. Now I'm going to add a few with this same medium dark, a few little dots into here, into the back of the head. This is called the nape. And then I'm also going to begin to put in some of these feathers, these, these rows of feathers on the upper part of the back and on the scapulars. Right, so these are going to be a, we're now getting a little bit more dark brown on my palette. Test my color off on the side. And I might do this, I might take, just take the tip of my brush and fray it slightly. So if you look at my brush tip, there are multiple points. And now I can take that and just come along here. <laughs> come back in one minute. Alrighty, there we go. So I've got sort of, I can make more rough marks with those. There it is. See, and so those dark marks, they go on top of might make those a little bit darker. Remember, with watercolor, you can always go darker. But if you start dark, you're at the top, and there's nowhere else to go. So I can, oh, I should reflex it. A few little marks in there like that. Tap, tap, tap here. So each one of these little taps make a little mark. Uh, see how these different marks I make? They're each slightly different. And so when I put those into there, you don't get this feeling of this thing being really like hyper symmetrical. And I like that. Now there's a little wingtip that sticks out here. And now with also with this dark brown, I'm going to paint in the eye except for the reflection. This one? Mm -hmm. Going to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow orange, test it on the side of my paper. And that's the color for my beak. Want that a little bit brighter. Now it's a little bit too canary yellow. So I'm going to get some more kind of palette gunk. Mute that back a little bit. The very tip of the beak has some dark on it. So I'm going to put some of that in while the paint is still wet so that it slightly blends with the other things. Another thing I can do while I've got this sort of, uh, oh, not a very sharp tip. For this, I want a sharp tip.
Ah. <laughs> so do you remember how I said, take the, pa the, pa the paint from your palette, right? Test it on the side of your paper and then put it on your piece of paper. I just didn't follow my own rules. And this is, this is a great example because you'll see kind of the problem that can happen. What I'm gonna zoom here on the eye of this bird. Um, zoom. And what you're looking at is that big black spot is a big puddle of paint in the wrong place, right? So I went with a, and look at how sort of sloppy, broad the tip of my, my brush is. It's filled with liquid and water. So when it hit that paper, it made a big blotch. So that's why I'm gonna try to come down straight on this, tap that up. It's able to get that up without causing too much of a problem. Now drawing my brush, I'll let this dry and I'll come back into that later. But you see that that was the reason I got into that problem is because I took paint from my palette straight over to my paper and I had an unexpected glob of water on the tip of it. So that was, that was really cool to see. Um, right. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of foot color. The feet are slightly orange. All right. I'm kind of giving this one a little bit of yellow orange feet. It's coming out a little bit too brownish for me. Test on the side of my paper. Ah, I just learned from my own mistake. Good. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up, mix up some really dark paint and I'm going to put in some of these stripes on the head and I'll go back in and I'll put that little pupil in. So I'm going to get, this is some Daniel Smith neutral tint. It's essentially black. Some people really don't believe in uh, painting with black that they should always mix your own dark things. Um, I find it really convenient to have some black on my on, on my palette. So I'm going to come here, behind here, back from the eye, my, with a sharp water brush, it's very much like um, drawing. I'm essentially drawing with the brush. And get there. That little pupil went in nicely this time. And on the far side of the head here, having that black on the far side of the head wrap around. The opposite side of the beak gives you the impression that this bird is looking towards you just slightly. And I've mixed up an even darker. And I'm going to put a little bit of a hint of that in. There's those cute little white crowds. It's interesting how having the uh, black on that head really pops, really pops the, um, the white, right? Those, 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 those feathers on the head feel white because those other ones are dark.
I'm finally going to take a little, just a little bit. Now I'm just going to play with my values a little bit. The body is looking a little bit anemic because the um, those dark stripes on the head are so bold. So I'm just going to add a little bit more sort of dark value. Kind of a, this is just end of the drawing value adjustment here. So I can bring a darker value into some of these stripes. Again, with this brush tip that is a little bit frayed so that I get going to spin my brush in my palette, make the tip of it sharp again. Add darker value into here, into here, maybe a long part of here. A few little kind of just higher contrast moments will push We'll push these effects on my bird. So there's layers here of, 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 of color, light to dark. The back is feeling still maybe a little bit too pale for me. I'm going to come in and just add a little bit more of a brownish value in there. Sneak that up. See, it's, it's, it's a little bit challenging to add these washes in among your details, uh, but sometimes I'll do a little bit of that at the end of a drawing to just slightly adjust my values. Test, test. Test, test. And I like my white crown sparrow. So there it is. Let's zoom on that. Little white crown sparrow with complex patterns in the wing. And our approach was um, that we started with the shadows. We built up our local color. Then we added our darks at the end. We also, at the end of this drawing, um, just a little bit of final value tweaking to make parts of this drawing fit together a little bit better. Dry, dry, dry. I've got a white colored pencil here. I'm going to add just a little bit of um, sort of a sense of detail with this. Here in some of these feathers, I'm going to just add a few little white little stripes. And that gives you just a sense that these are more fluffy. On the back here, this gives you a little bit more texture. And I might put a little bit on the cheek here. A little highlight on the top of the beak. And that's good. For the Blue Jay, what I'm going to do is do this one. We took a lot of time with that first bird. And so you're thinking like, oh my gosh, this is 
Uh, yeah, this is a, the large, uh, the large fine point aquash water brush. Um, <laughs> but on the um, on the blue jay, let me show you a drawing uh, some of the photographs of the blue jay. We're going to do the blue jay much more quickly. And just uh, the, the first part demonstration was, let's use this as, you know, just a very careful, um, highly detailed illustration. We can also get a sense of just really quick, um, really quick, quick texture. Um, in a fast sketch, we'll be using exactly the same procedure, but you'll just see we're just not being as fussy. And you're thinking, oh no, this bird looks crazy fussy. But, but don't worry, it's, it's, it's going to be all right. So we've got these zones of a little bit of, uh, let's first take a look at the light places. There's whites around here. There are, there's a gray in the upper part of the chest, giving way to white on the lower under parts here. Light blue in the wings. A little bit darker blue in here. So lighter blue, darker blue. So more cyan here, more blue up here. Cyan in here, cyan in here, right? Um, and purplish gray on the back, getting up into the top of the crest where we have some blue. And then there are those black bars across it. So think to yourself, what your order of operations would be of colors. And then what we're going to do is just go boom, 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 drop these colors in. Drop these colors in. So just take a very close look at these for a moment. All right, you ready? What I'm going to do now is go back to the webcam, and you're going to see that we are going to do the drawing of this blue jay much, much more quickly. All right. <clears throat> we'll start. I've already put in my shadows. This time, the shadows are. Um, on this far side of the body, leaving the chest here in more light. I'm going to first mix up some chest color, and I'm going to get a slightly purple-ish tint brown value. And do I like this? Yes, I do. All right, and I'm going to put that right here across the front of the chest. My brush strokes are following the direction of the feathers. Right. I'm now going to come with a little bit of more of a purple. A purpley blue. And I'm going to test that on the side here. And I'm going to bring that into the back of the bird. I'm going to start here closer to this edge. And bring it back out like that. Take some of that and put it up into the um, into the crest there. I'm now going to get some brighter cyan blue. Test that on the side of my paper.
See that hard edge? I don't want that. So while it's still wet, I'm going to clean my brush and just brush that edge with clear water. And that softens that edge. All right. Now, there are white stripes in the wing and there are white striped spots at the edges of these tail feathers. So um, I'm going to make this part blue. I'm gonna make this part blue, but I'm leaving a white stripe up there in the wing. I am going to then mix up cyan. and put cyan into this part of my wing here. And the tail. I'm now going to mix up a little bit of black. While this bit in here is drying, I'm going to work around the face. I have sharp little brush tip. Imagine the how difficult it would be if you put in the colors on the this 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 black strip first and then came along with um, trying to to, to work the, these other colors around it be much more difficult. I'm painting with my, my brush, sort of where the shadow would be on the feet, and then a little hint of some scaling on the top surface of that. Um, Lastly, on the tail itself, on the underside of the table, I, tail, I have a little bit of dark in here. And on the top part of the tail, I have these black bands that go across. So I can take my brush tip, fan it slightly. I'm going to put black into the back part of the wing in here. Jack, could you move the um, picture just a little bit? Thank you. All right. I have dark that comes along these bands in here and Remember what you're seeing in when you're seeing these dark lines across the wing is you're seeing different feathers with its little piece of the dark. So you will often kind of have, you can kind of make it feel like it's feathers by having these little sections that 
do the dark. And they more or less line up, but not completely. Final thing that this birdie needs is just to kind of tighten up some of these edges. And I'm not drawing a hard line around the entire thing. Just in a few places around here, I'm gonna punch that line. Make it a little bit more deliberate and crisp. <clears throat> Here's some of these claws from the other side showing around the side of the branch. That went a lot faster, didn't it? So we've looked at kind of a very kind of careful placement step-by-step -step piece with this. We did this one much more quickly, but it, it, it followed the same approach. So you saw that when we're just sort of popping in these colors here, we put all that black in at the very end. That black part's fun to do. Just think of, of how tempting it would be to do that early on. But that then just derails your whole process. If you're trying to work around those things, and you know, can you imagine trying to paint that wing in any other order, it would be really, really difficult to do and would make a big mess. So this is the step-by-step -step approach um, that I use when I am uh, painting a bird. Actually, you know, I'm going to show you one other trick. One other trick. Ah. I should stop while I'm ahead, but I'm, I'm gonna just keep going a little bit. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of the purple that I have. And um, on the back there, I'm gonna fan the tip of this brush, get it really dry, pick up a little bit of that paint and see if I can just add a little bit of texture right into here. That area was just sort of feeling a little bit kind of plain. And similarly, here in the front chest of the bird, this part around here was feeling, this just feels a little bit plain to me. And can I fan the tip of my brush? Fan the tip of the brush. See, it's a big fan, big fan. And look at this. Um, I'll zoom. See if this shows up on your screen. This gives a little bit of texture in there. Uh, it doesn't really show up on the screen that well, but I'm just adding a little bit of dry brush texture in there. And that helps that part of the chest flesh up. There it is, um, a couple of watercolor birds. This approach is what I use in drawing just about everything that I do. Um, and if you uh, are doing landscapes, you can find it applies you know, just as well to doing a landscape. Um, if you are doing a, um, a botanical, I originally learned this approach um, by looking at um, a book by Keith West, uh, who's a botanical illustrator. And he, um, he starts his botanical illustrations by 
putting this sort of purple gray mixture across the wildflowers that he's painting and then um, pulls that into the, the detailed drawings, the, the, the final finished color drawings that, uh, that he does. And so this, uh, this approach can be applied to doing all sorts of, of things.